Hi, welcome to How Off the Shelves. My name is Kara. This is Sonali. And today we are going to do a book review of this book called The House in the Syrian Sea by T.J. Klune. Um, can you tell us a little about the summary? Yeah, so it's about this caseworker, uh, Linus Baker. It's set in England. And he he's living a pretty monotonous life. He's been working at this federal agency for 20 plus years. It's called DICOMI, which is D-I-C-O-M-Y. And it stands for the Department and Care of Magical Youth. And he he's not treated very well by his supervisors, but he views it as just a job. And he's never experienced anything different. So he he thinks it's the only way of life. And so his job is to go to all these orphanages and make sure that everything is safe. And if things aren't safe, then he might recommend that the, the orphanage be closed down. And he never thinks about what happens to the kids when he leaves because he thinks he's just doing his job. And his job is all about following these rules and writing these really precise, objective reports. And he doesn't think beyond that. Yeah, until his life is pretty mundane. Yeah, he... Um, he goes home and he feeds his cat and sometimes he listens to music by himself. He's kind of lonely. Um, all he wants to do is see the ocean for the first time and he's never even been able to do that until um, one day he gets sent on this top secret, super classified mission and he gets to go to this very remote island and it's actually in... Um, the destination of his dreams like where he's always wanted to vacation it's on this like remote island called Mauritius I think and it's to investigate this orphanage which has all these magical children in it and um everyone is like taught to be scared of these children and his job is to write a report on this orphanage and see if the orphanage should be closed down or not yeah, pretty uh, pretty similar to you know what a caseworker um, in CPS does in the United States. Uh, there are a lot of things that we get to explore in this book. Uh, one of them is being the prejudice. These kids, because they are magical beings, they have to be registered as magical beings. But with the labels, we all know that it kind of confines your character. People don't really see beyond the label at times. And that's something that that these kids get to experience. And of course, you know, the government all over the world, no, sorry, all over uh, the city and the village nearby the island, they have this slogan that said, see something, say something. Well, we know that it's, it's necessary to remind people that, hey, you can speak out, uh, speak up if you see something weird. People use that as an excuse to kind of treat these kids badly and you know, that's not okay so we get to see um the play on prejudice and discrimination throughout this book yeah, yeah. and uh. and then um the next one that we get to see is like the work life culture uh like we like sonali has said his you know life has been pretty mundane and uh he just have his cat and that's kind of the gist of it he just work 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 right and uh work is not the best place because they they're just exploiting their workers to work so much that they don't have free time um in fact linus was supposed to go on a a vacation one day he had the rental car and everything ready and guess what happened his work call and be like no you got to be back here uh so he had to return the car and such that um so that's another thing that we get to see in in this book yeah so yeah, then the next one is like keeping in mind all of this, that he's a worker without a lot of power and there's so much prejudice. Is it possible to create change in this unjust world? And can one person create change? Yeah. Um, and, you know, as we know in life, obviously change doesn't happen overnight. It's like like little changes per uh, within oneself and that will affect other people and then we get to see that in Linus. Linus changed his uh, mindset tiny bit over time and then that inspired the headmaster author to change something to change his mindset on on something else which led to changing mindset of the nearby villager. So that's kinda neat to see. And of course we can't forget the um the idealism that is played in here because 
even Linus, he he's an idealistic uh, individual, and he he truly believes that he's he's doing his job, but and he's helping these kids. But he's also naive because when you have a big corporation, you don't. There are a lot of loopholes, and there are a lot of you know not necessarily good people. But he himself is good, so, and he himself hasn't really faced prejudice, so he sometimes doesn't really understand what these kids are going through. Uh, but of course, he learns later. So that's kind of neat to see the theme, the changes in this book for that. And um, of course, uh, the one of our favorite themes, the romantic love. Yeah, uh, Linus and um, the head of the orphanage have this beautiful love story, and um, and they're both men. So we get to see a queer love story which isn't something we see every day and it's not the main part of the novel like their queerness isn't central or anything but it's it's cool to see queer representation yeah um and that is what we hope for in the future right um if you shouldn't need to come out to your parents you shouldn't need to come out to your society to your friends if you're queer you're queer and that's the end of that that should be the case but unfortunately, it is not right now. A lot of people still feel like they have to come out. Um, and, and that is sad to hear at times. I mean, of course, if you want to come out, then you can come out. But, but you know, we should all just accept you for who you are. And you shouldn't have to feel like you need to come out because you're afraid that other people won't accept you. Um, and I love that TJ Klum added those two characters because, like she said, it's not the main story. It's like, cool, they're gay, but like, What's the main story here? Like, we just want to go on with the story. It's so, so trivial that, like, we kind of not even think about it. Like, we, it's, we just think that they're a great couple and that was it. So that's awesome. And then um, the one of the other main things that we see throughout this book, which I would say probably one of the most uh, important theme is uh, family slash um, unconditional love. Um, you know, Linus does not have that family support back up home well he calls it home but really is it a home if it's not um it's not the people that you want to spend time with that's a question you get to explore that in this book yeah yeah like how do you create your own family and choose who you want to spend time with yes exactly and um and then you know all these kids they they teach the adults on how to love they they also learn from the adults on how to control their impulses how to control um anger how to control sadness i mean you can be scared all you want but you just have to to remind yourself that that's not who you are all the time and it's okay to be scared it's okay to be angry and they get to explore on basically how to be an adult so that they can function better and of course uh, you explore the differences between um between uh, keeping them safe in a remote island or assimilate them to to you know the the village and we get to see that as well yeah yeah like how do you how do you um deal with prejudice mm-hmm yeah so for me i'm gonna give this book a 10 out of 10 because i love it and it's a, such a cute book all the characters are amazing the little kids you know they are magical beings but at the end of the day they are such such adorable little kids they are just kids they they have their own little jokes and weird jokes but still jokes and and you know they just want to have fun and the the adults they they're the ones that finally change and they provide a better future for these kids and i, I love it what, what would you give this book also a 10 out of 10 it, it was just a sweet story um so many so many like things we can learn from it and be inspired by yeah so Anyway, um, thank you for watching. And if you want to listen to our in-depth discussion on this book, there's another video. Uh, click on the link below us. And also, if you are more of a podcast listener, we also have a podcast. It's available on all platforms. And you know what? Just tell us if you have read this book and then which character you like best. And, uh, uh, and then we will see you next month.